Okay guys, welcome back. This is Cringy Star and I'm here with the big Sheikh Abu Torab. Yes. Uh, I'll introduce you. Thank you, um, thank you. Um, and obviously I'm here with the bigger Sheikh Dawood. And they don't like they don't like me calling them that but I'm fine. I'm very, very nice. <laughs> I'm cool. Okay, so one question that I got when I put up the Instagram poll or Instagram Q and A was that how do you balance essentially Islamic studies alongside um, like secular studies, so whether that be like medicine or whether that be A-levels for some people. Yeah, for so, our case it's A-levels, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just... yeah. So obviously, I think one topic that we're going to start off with is this is essentially going to be the overview. You can check the timestamps that are going to be in the description box. But essentially it's going to be Quran, Arabic, and I say Quran like Quran. I'm English. Yeah, yeah. Quran, um, Arabic, uh, as well as like the importance of brotherhood when attending like like a program. Circles, um, lectures. But yeah, so we'll start off and try to go first. Okay, so remember guys, we used to go, um, uh, in our break time, our lunch time, we used to all meet together in Mr. Farad's room, in the yeah. physics classroom. Yeah, yeah. We used to relax there, talk around, you know, make sure that the brotherhood was like up to date. would be like, oh, what happened in your lesson? Or just help each other out with like homework, deadlines and stuff like that. So obviously the brotherhood side was always there after like, and also we were in the same class for the entire year for maths anyway. So that's one important thing for you to do. Make sure that break time and lunch time, you take it easy, you don't revise, you just chill with the brothers. Have like a place where you go and meet up and just chill around, like share stuff and like crack bands basically. 100% I get you. And that links into the hadith of the Prophet, peace be upon him, um, or the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, where he says, Al mar'u ala dini khalili fal yandur ahadakum man yu khalid. So, um, Again, the translation to that would be that a person is on the religion of his best friend or a Khalil in Arabic is um, someone who's close to you. So whether that be your wife, your companion, or someone you just spend the most time with um, or a lot of time with. Um, and essentially you're on the religion of him. So the way of life of him. So the advice of the Prophet peace upon him is to look into who you take as a close person. Mm -hmm. Um, and obviously with that there's like obviously like secular stats but like Forbes you're the average of your five friends and all that sort of yep. stuff um, so what do you want to say about it Dawood? I say in terms of balancing your deen with the secular studies now a lot of people look at it as two separate categories where you know as in it's a deen and the dunya but a lot of the times I think the best way to come at it or the best angle to come at it from is the idea that the idea that when you're studying in terms of the deen or in terms of the religion whether it's attending a circle every week whether it's memorizing a few ayahs of the Quran alongside your A-level studies it's not taking from your time rather it's giving more back into your lifestyle so the barakah that comes alongside studying for example the barakah that comes alongside committing some of your time of the day to to the religion um, to worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala obviously but I think the the hadith that basically resonated with me the most during my two years of NCS um, was the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ where he said أَحَبُّ الْأَعْمَالِ إِلَى اللَّهِ أَدْوَمُهَا وَإِنْ قَلْ That the most beloved actions towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's sight are the actions that are done consistently وَإِنْ قَلْ even if they are small so whether it's you know attending like me and Abu Salaam we used to attend weekly Monday circles with Ustaz Jamal it was like it was two three hour long um, where was it where was it East Allah Masjid alhamdulillah um, we asked Allah that, that, that was really good like we used to go in every time every time that because Dawood used to run late sometimes he used to call me and be like yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no no that's true yeah but he used to call me and be like Akhi, uh, can you write my name down so we used to <laughs> why are you making me up for me <laughs> no no no, no. <laughs> it's true bro this, yeah. this guy this guy used to you said you would expose me I didn't know you would come no 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 they walked they walked they write your name down I used to write your name down obviously we used to do the class and after the class here yeah, we used to have the little half an hour chilling session so you meet all the other brothers and you know one good thing is like you know you, you see people that are older than you that are union they yep. give you advice yes, and stuff like that like, exactly. like remember you can always take advice from anyone especially people like mm -hmm. you know Sheikh Jamal and stuff like that yeah. so obviously you used to take uh, you know advice chill around and then obviously Dawood used to drop me off home every single day and we used to just chill make sure we didn't get and, mm, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, Allah okay, no, 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 no. Um, one question I'd like to ask is uh, just on the topic of uh, mm -hmm. Sir Jamal no. who is he like uh, what, what's his credentials? Okay. What does he know? Is, is he a hafid yeah. or...? So he memorized the Qur'an, as far as I know, he memorized the Qur'an here somewhere in North London. Okay. Um, age of and one 14? Of the times, yeah, age of 14 around that. One of his, his teachers, Sheikh Abdul, uh, Abdul Rashid Sufi, he's a renowned Qari. He saw him in a masjid one time, tested him. He went over to Kuwait, Ustaz Jamal, to learn from him. And he's mastered all the 10 Qira'at. Mashallah. So is that Minor 10 Qur'an. different uh, variations? Variations of the way you read it. Okay. So, yeah. yeah. So Hafsan Asim, Shu'ban Asim, stuff like that. So, yeah. again... 
Allahumma barik me, Allah bless him. Um, so we'll get on to the point that Dawood said, um, Adwamuha wa inqal. Um, I'm not in the same boat as these two brothers, may Allah bless them, who've memorized Quran, um, but I'm trying. Um, but the one advice that a brother by the name of Talha gave me was that before you begin um, using your phone or you begin playing games or eating food or something along the lines, any other activity um, apart from the necessities, for example, just getting out of bed and potentially brushing your teeth, is that you begin with the Quran and that you spend time yeah, yeah. yeah you spend time in the Quran you complete what you need before you get on to anything else mm -hmm. now this re resides with the UK advice that I give Fajr time which is the morning the dawn time mm -hmm. that I give to potentially learning and revising so that at the end of the day you don't feel that pressure oh I need to memorize mm -hmm. Quran and so that you're not forced but you treasure your time Plus you're, you're like your brain works better in the morning anyway like you're like fresh. That, that's for me. Yeah, no, no, I get you, I get like you. You're nice and fresh. Mm. And the hadith, Burika fi ummati fi bukuriha, or something like that, the baraka of the ummah, of this ummah, is in the early mornings, is in the early yeah, hours. Yeah, yeah. So once you've committed those early hours towards worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you've already kind of, not, I wouldn't say get that out of the way because you don't have that mindset of getting the ibadah out of yeah, the way, yeah, yeah. but you've already committed the first of your day towards that. Then for the rest of the day, you know that, okay, now I can really commit myself to secular studies for example and you've got that barakah that comes along with it and you don't have that in the back of your head oh I need to quickly go into Quran or you could do some extra at the end of the day but you've already known that you've got the daily portion out of the way if that makes sense yeah yeah because obviously you have a daily portion that you have to do do you know what I mean mm. because obviously you're going to start forgetting so that's important for you to have a time uh, one of the videos I watched with uh, one of the sheikhs he was giving advice on how to memorize the Quran he said most important thing akhi, obviously there are different ways to memorize Quran and study but the time needs to be respected do you get it? You need to have a time. You say, okay, Saturday, three hours every week, I'm going to do Arabic. It doesn't have to be three hours. It can be less, it can be more. But the time needs to be respected. you get it? So then you know, okay, whether, whether you're chilling, playing games, you're meeting someone, you're like, Akhi, no. This, this time, three o'clock to five o'clock, it's my Quran time, it's my Arabic time. Because once you have the time set up, then you, you're more organized, you know what I mean? You're, you're looking ahead of the week, ahead of the months. And when you organize something, you'll be like, okay, cool. If I read two hours every single week, or if I do two hours Arabic every single week, at the end of three months, I'm going to be on this level, I'm going to be on that level. So it's more like, you're just going with the flow and you have a nice but little I think, plan. I think it's very important to come at it from someone who perhaps hasn't even memorized any of the Quran, for example, yeah, yeah. and is doing A-level studies and might find it overwhelming, for example, what we're just saying, like two hours a week. Again, the hadith, back to the hadith, Consistent even if it's small Whether it's you're doing your A-level studies And you're finding that hard as it is You want to commit some time to the deen All you need to do The wisdom behind Is that you do one line a day You say I'm going to memorize one line of Quran a day And you make sure that you keep consistent to that one line a day Now if you keep consistent to that one line, one line a day Before you know it You'll get better and better at memorizing And you'll increase it the issue is when people go for one page a day and they do one page, for example, and they leave one page the first day, second day they do a page, third day they do a page, then next three page weeks they don't do anything. It starts going down for example, me day. even, like, for example, I, used, I went on this thing where I used to write down my page of Quran before I memorized it, I used to write it down. I wrote that down every day, I used to do like two pages, I used to write it out. If I just stuck to three lines and kept it consistent, I would have continued it. But because I started off with two pages right in a day, I ended up keeping it for about a week, two weeks, and then... A couple months later, I look back, I open the book, and I see, oh wow, subhanAllah, that was four months back. If I'd kept that consistent, I could have made so much progress. But a lot of the time, we do that to ourselves, where we take on a huge burden. Potentially made a lot of progress. And exactly, potentially made a lot of progress, exactly. So if I kept that low, small, and over time, it would gradually increase, as the hadith says. But one good thing, bro, is, as I said, uh, going to, like, for example, classes out there in your local masjids. Because one good thing with that is that, first of all, let's say one day you might, you know, your iman fluctuates and you're, no. you don't want to go, you feel a little bit lazy. Your brother's like, Akhi, where you at? Do you know what I mean? Like, come in. Yeah. And then you got your brotherhood sorted. You learn some stuff. You just chill. Like, sometimes we used to, remember the day when we ate pizzas and stuff like that? We just go out, eat, relax, and just talk about our daily life. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So you're, you're not only coming out and, uh, you know, just getting that knowledge. You're getting lots of stuff into it. Do you get it? Yeah. So... Even even when it comes to like gym stuff, working out, you always go with someone. Do you know what I mean? So to to motivate you and to be there for you mm -hmm. and to help you out. With yeah, yeah. Also so. on top of that, I'd say the hadith adwamuha wa inqal. Also, like there's so many gems from it. Obviously, we're not here to enumerate all of them because we can't. Um, but one of them is that we all know the ebbing house forgetting curve, and essentially that is that the more days you recap the better or stronger your memory will be of that specific subject. Mm -hmm. So it just 
like it's not just a specific khas um, benefit for the deen it's a benefit that you can incorporate within your normal daily lives that you benefit from for, like within the secular aspect as well as the spiritual aspect so essentially that discipline that the skills that you develop is mm -hmm. I'd say beneficial for 100% 100% so right now we've just we've briefly just skimmed the top of um, the aspect of Quran which is the the holy book in what we believe within our tradition our Islamic tradition um, to be the word of God so I hope that's benefited everyone and that you've taken benefits whether it be very small and you've understood the importance of consistency and brotherhood um, or friends the reason why we use the term brotherhood is that in Islam we consider ourselves to be brothers and so that means obviously that we aim to support care for each other uh, on the topic of support for example like we mentioned having a brotherhood around you is very very important like the Monday circles that we attend where you see brothers who for example one brother he was like third year of dentistry mashallah and he was always front line in the halaqa taking notes always the one taking notes sometimes no one else would be taking notes apart from him but he again succeeded in the secular side and was very dedicated to the Islamic side as well which carried over but some people out there might be watching and saying well I don't have a local masjid to go to well I don't have brothers that I know I can go to and keep me motivated so I'm by myself again like we said support so our socials should be linked to the bottom maybe, hopefully yeah, 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 so if yeah. anyone wants to reach <laughs> yeah. if anyone wants to reach out to any of us and have a and have a chat have a little talk um, ask for any tips perhaps inshallah um, we do our best of our ability inshallah because we're not sheikhs or anything like that yeah, we're yeah, just yeah. Bro you know we're brothers out here trying our best yeah. inshallah at least we'll try to direct you in um, I'm not saying like we're some sort of imams that we're here to no, guide No, we're just going to be there to, for basic support, you know, help you out. Mm. At you least know. like link you to places like Knowledge College and yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, places like that where there's yeah. extra like... But like even in BLM and them, they do so many like stuff for different age groups and you just meet brothers there. Like you know the Friday dubs that you, you, you go to, you know, on Fridays. You meet so many brothers there, so many people, you know. So again, there's, there's a lot of things that we potentially may be able to help you out and we are based in London. So um, if you're not in London, then there's obviously like online alternatives for the meanwhile. Um, but again, if you choose to come to London via uh, uni, for example, then hopefully you might see us around. You know, whatever place you go to, one thing that I want to mention is, uh, remember your college, not all colleges, but unis especially, they have the ISOC, the Islamic Society. Mm. So that is one place like, Astro, we met in the prayer room at NCS, like properly. So go to places like where you know you're most likely going to find people who at least pray. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Go to the ISO, go to the prayer room, and that's where you're going to find real brothers, inshallah. Do you know what I'm trying yeah, to say? Yeah, that's where, that, that's, that's, and that's how it starts. Then you say, okay, let's go out, let's go out to eat. And then eventually, you never know, some brothers know each other for years, like 10 years, 20 years. Do you know what I mean? From the prayer yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I mean, three years at least, alhamdulillah. But it was good, it was good, alhamdulillah. I enjoyed the experience. So, definitely. Yeah, and, and it was and it was something not something to be like underrated because it wasn't even like an official point. It was, it was a room we had, brothers would come and pray. Some brothers were never praying before college even, subhanAllah. And you don't know what effect you can have on those around you where they come for one, one salah. Before you know it, you know, subhanAllah, they're correcting you on your mistakes in tajweed and all that stuff. So again, remember starting small, keeping it consistent. And even though you have an effect on those around you as well, and yeah. So we'll wrap it up there, and um, guys, hopefully you've enjoyed that and got a taste to the questions that essentially, like a, I got a uh, two questions on this topic as well as a few others, and hopefully I've spread some a little bit of light on it, and uh, we've tried the best of our ability just to explain a few things. We're not eloquent to a massive degree. Um, and hopefully you benefited. So guys, catch Shabba. you in the next video. Take care, guys. Assalamu alaikum. Alaikum salam. Alaikum salam.